Okay, so let's take a look at the model of the larynx. Um, what you can see here is this white structure here is the hyoid bone. As you guys may remember, the hyoid bone supports the tongue on its superior surface. On its inferior surface, it's going to support the larynx and prevent it from falling down into your throat. A uh, hyoid bone is um, obviously made of bone, not technically part of the larynx. The larynx itself is composed of nine cartilages. Eight of them are hyaline and one is elastic. The one elastic cartilage is this structure here, the epiglottis. Uh, we're currently looking at this model from its anterior position. So uh, patient's left would be on this side, patient's right would be on this side and we're approaching from the front. The structure right here is the laryngeal protuberance. It's piece of cartilage, most anterior portion of this bigger piece of cartilage, the thyroid cartilage. So thyroid cartilage, laryngeal protuberance. Laryngeal protuberance is also referred to as the epigla, sorry, is referred to as the Adam's apple. It's a piece of cartilage which is sensitive to testosterone, meaning it actually will uh, be enlarged and more noticeable in men than women. Uh, the cartilage right below it, this is cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage is responsible for giving the larynx its Bach-like structure. And if you rotate the larynx so that we're now looking at it in the posterior view, you can see that cricoid cartilage is continuous 360 degrees around. Gives the larynx strength as well. These structures down here are not technically part of the larynx because they're part of the trachea or the windpipe. Cartilage rings that are part of the windpipe. So in the anterior view we had our cricoid cartilage, our thyroid cartilage, our laryngeal protuberance or prominence, anatomy, right? Um, our epiglottis. Now let's take a look at the model from the posterior view can see the epiglottis again. You can see the posterior side of the thyroid cartilage. You can see the posterior side of the cricoid cartilage. Now you can see that there are one, two, three, four. Four more pieces of cartilage here. These structures that look like crooked fingers are referred to as the arachnoid cartilages and we have one and two. These structures over here that sit on top of them let me get a little closer for you guys. You can see they look a little bit like bird claws, don't they? You have one over here and then one on the other side over here. These are referred to as the corniculate cartilages. The remaining two cartilages, the cuneiform cartilages, you cannot see not on this model because they're embedded in one of the membranes. And um, as I mentioned before and uh, during the presentation, I will hold you responsible for knowing the bone and the cartilages. I'll let your uh, lecture professors get you on the membranes. So, oh darn, can't show you the uh, cuneiform cartilages on this model. But the uh, arachnoid, cartilages actually go ahead and protect a very important structure. If I get a little closer here, if I rotate these arachnoid cartilages medially towards each other, look what happens up. A hole appears if I let them rotate laterally back into their relaxed position. Look what happens. The hole closes up. So this hole, which is opening and closing, is referred to as the glottis. G-L-O-T-T-I-S, this is the glottis. This is the opening into the windpipe, into the trachea, and then down into the lungs. So this is the way that air is conducted down into the lungs. When that glottis is open, we're breathing or talking. When it's closed, it's because we're swallowing food, liquid, saliva, or otherwise trying to keep foreign material out of there, okay? So this is a fail-safe. And this glottis is protected on either side by the vocal folds, okay? So here's the opening. The area 
to the immediate left and right of this opening is the true vocal folds. They're called true vocal folds or true vocal cords because what they vibrate allowing us to make noise like this lovely speech that you're hearing. The rest of the vocal folds on either side are referred to as the false vocal folds. Um, together they work to keep foreign material out of the windpipe. So remember that's the primary function of the uh, larynx is to keep foreign material out of the windpipe. Now as a uh, failsafe and to provide extra protection when we swallow and that glottis is closed the epiglottis gets pushed down by the action of our tongue to go ahead and protect the glottis so once again it's another way to keep material out of our windpipe and this is why this structure is made out of elastic cartilage we need something tough that can maintain its shape and this is why it's called the epiglottis, because epi means upon. So, glottis, that's the hole. And then epiglottis, sitting on top of the glottis. Okay. Uh, that hole, for people interested in uh, surgery, is where you're going to go ahead and put a breathing tube in a patient. So, uh, there you go. There you have it. That is the... Uh, model of the larynx.